Gracias. Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to present the expectations of this course. It is an uh, introduction course to cyber security topics in order to understand also how technology works, in order for you to feel more interested in tempering the technology so that it works in a different way. This is a workshop, so this is not a present, uh, just a speech. I need you to interact, and we're going to try many things, as many as time permits. It is difficult for me to reach you from the stage, but if at certain point you want to come forward, no problem. For those who are on streaming, Obviously, they can see the course, but they won't be able to interact, which is the most interesting part of the course. I am Raul Siles. I work at Dynasec. I work on cybersecurity topics for a very long time because I'm quite interested in technology. Before starting, I would like to try for you to practice and to draw conclusions from your technology. So maybe you can use your mobile device, because I am sure you all have either a smartphone or a tablet, so that you can know what to do with these devices. How many of you handle technology? I am sure that probably you won't have a laboratory like the one on the picture, but you like playing with technology. I guess most of you, I guess that's the reason why you're here. Okay, we're going to try to get to know our mobile devices. For that, I need your interaction so that you can learn things and practice things. Okay, so what we're going to do is block your mobile phone, please, or your mobile device. Do you have any access code to, in order for the owner to access the device? How many of you have an access code? Who doesn't? No one wants to raise the hand so that we don't point them. OK. How many of you have a PIN code, so a four-digit number? How many of you have a pattern. Those who raise your hand, we know you have Android because iOS doesn't have a pattern. Uh, a password, I mean alphanumeric password. Less people, but still some of you. How many of you use biometrics? Most of you. Okay. It is fashionable right now. Later we're going to see something quite interesting, which is how to disable in a fast way biometrics and the scenarios where this can be useful. And regarding bio, uh, biometrics, who use uh, digital print and who uses facial recognition? Okay, I understand that no one has iris recognition because some Android devices do have this option. Okay, to Unblock the device and see how long it takes you. Let us know, please. One second. What did you use? Biometrics? Pattern? The pattern where you swipe your finger doesn't require uh, a long time. Biometrics is even faster. But when you have to enter a password, it gets more complicated. And the user is the one who is upset by entering a complex alphanumeric password. More things. If you block the mobile device again and you see the uh, screen, do you know all the icons in your screen when it is blocked? 
Do you, if you have any comments or thoughts or you have some icon which you hadn't seen before, you can share this. The idea is for you to see if you know your device in depth. Later, we're going to ask you what you're seeing on the screen because you have to take into account that anyone can see the blocked screen content. For example, the we start or the telephone company, for example, Orange, Movistar, Yoigo, you all see that, right? So someone could use this information to uh, create a fake uh, company's uh, telephone station so that your phone connects to it. Can you see any information on your uh, operating system on that screen? Would you know which ones are Android or iOS? Yeah, the physical hour, it is easier, right? What version of operating system do you have? Look it up. Maybe we can use Kahoot. We have a couple. In order to make it more interac interactive, we're going to use Kahoot questionnaires in order to know your operating system version. I understand that all of you are connected to Wi-Fi or to 4G. For those who are at home, you can also participate in Kahoot online, so we should see the answers you're giving us. We have an audience of teenagers, families, and so on. Depending on how the workshop goes, we will play with this. So I present you, I'm going to introduce Monica Salas, my colleague at Dinosec. Both of us are going to present this course. I hadn't introduced her before. Due to a reason, I will explain later. OK, so we're going to play Kahoot. So we're going to change the screen so that anyone can see. Uh, the screen and so that you have enough time to connect to the internet. And I'm going to show you where to find the version of operating system and the level of patches for Android devices. Okay. What we're going to do is to launch the workshop option. You need to enter kahoot.it. So www.kahoot.it and you enter this pin. You choose a nickname and you will be already connected. We are seeing new users who are getting connected. I'm going to give you some time so that you have uh, enough time to, uh, to connect. And let's see your operating system. You have 60 seconds for each question. Okay, so let's start. It is not about competing, it is to challenge yourselves. So the first one is for Android. So you have four options for Android. So where can I see the version of operating system in Android? In settings operating system, in settings information of phone version of Android, Yellow is a settings system system update, and green is settings security screen block. Okay, since we are in Android, how many people have Android 10? Only one person, two, 
Two people. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay, I couldn't see because of the light. Android 10 was launched in August this year, and we are in December. Who has Android 9? Okay, around 10 people or so. Okay, Android 8? Android 7? Android 6. And I guess that the rest of you has um, iOS. So 23 people um, chose the correct answer. Verne is the first one who answered. And let's move on to iOS. So where can you find your iOS version? Red option, settings, general, software update. Who has iOS 13 from those who have iOS? 13.2.3, that's the latest version. Uh, from Hackathon, I was told that this morning a vulnerability was published, which was compromising hotels in Europe and in Asia in order to attack the uh, guests. So it is better to have the latest version. Who has iOS 12? iOS 11? Those who have older versions from Android, if it's less than Android 10 or iOS 13, you have a device with high number of vulnerabilities. So from the point of view of security, it is uh, difficult. It, it, your device can be attacked. OK, this is the podium. And, okay, iOS had more time to check where to uh, find this information. Okay, you already know your iOS version. Let's change the screen. From the point of view of security, and we will give you some more examples on it. The version is quite important. Do you have any localization services? Can you see it from your screen block? Who has localization services? Do you know if you can see them from the screen, from the blocked screen? Yes, there are some games which use localization systems such as Pokemon Go, and some other people use these services to take public transport and to look on maps. Could I see if those services are being used? Sometimes, yes, that depends on this settings, but there is an icon which indicates they are being used. Okay, there was a question on disable, disabling biometrics. Do you think of a scenario where you think it is necessary to disable biometrics? No? No? No one? So, a place packed with people, if they steal your device, you mean? Imagine your device is blocked, but you can unblock it through biometrics. The you may no you need to think of a scenario where you need to disable biometrics for some reason have you ever seen videos the typical video of a boy that attacks his father this is very spanish 
that attacks his father because he's sleeping, he's taking a nap, and takes his finger to unblock the device. That's not the uh, most critical example. That's the example we had for the uh, family part, but we can adapt it. No, 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 no. The typical example in these cases is in the uh, technical part, I'm, I'm, I, for example, I'm flying to the United States and in the customs, they tell me that I have to block, to unblock the screen. Do you know that the Fifth Amendment doesn't allow you to make you, due to this amendment, uh, you may have forgotten your PIN code and it is not compulsory for you to do it. But biometrics is not included in the Fifth Amendment. So you may say, I have forgotten my PIN code, but they may ask you to put your finger on the, um, on the screen. Also, um, let's think of a boy or a teenager who is in a place where he thinks he's going to be stolen. So if somebody steals his phone and passes it in front of your face, uh, they can unblock it. In those cases, we always say, give your mobile phone away. I mean, it is your life is more important. But the with biometrics, they may not uh, ac access the mobile phone. Do you know? Do you know how to disable biometrics without having to access settings? I mean, I'm not talking about unregister your PIN code, but about deleting that option in a fast way. I'm going to show you. I'll show you. It is easier to understand. Okay, here it is. In both Android and iOS devices, there is you need to have Android 9. If you push the start button for a long time, if you press um, the button for a long time, then you have several options, which is the lockdown mode. Here you have the references of where to find that mode, which should be activated by default in Android 9 and 10. And basically, when you have this lockdown mode, you cannot use biometrics among any among other options. So, for example, the first time that you start your phone then you cannot use biometrics. If you have five attempts, failed attempts, then you cannot use it. And in iOS, I, this is associated to emergency services. So depending on using iPhone 7 or higher, is you push the start button, you press the start button five times, and then you have this uh, screen. Be careful not to call emergency service. But if this screen appears on your phone, you have already disabled your biometric option. And in new in newer iPhones, you just have you can also do it with the volume up and down buttons. So the next thing we're going to do, this is uh, the first question in this, in this uh, training course is, what is a hacker? How would you define a hacker? What's the favorite color of hackers? Let's start with that easy question. Necesitamos vuestra colaboración. Es un taller. We need your collaboration. This is a workshop. We need you to participate. Black, right? Hackers always were in black. More stereotypes, please. How can you identify a hacker? The hoodie, right? The hood. Why? Why a hood? 
because they want to hide themselves, they want to be undercover. But you have also identified them with a hood, so it is not a good strategy. What else? Is it a hacker good or bad? What are his favorite numbers, their favorite numbers? Zeros and ones, binary code, of course. This is a hacker. Hood, black, zeros, ones. There we have the Hollywood stereotypes. Children usually say that they wear a beard. That's why I grew my beard for today in order to keep on being a hacker. Okay, according to the uh, Spanish Language Association, this is the definition of a hacker. It is a computing pirate, somebody that illegally access computing systems in order to obtain secret information. So according to this definition, is it a hacker, a good guy or a bad guy? according to what you're used to. Yeah, it's a bad guy. And what does the do media say? A hacker accessed, blah, blah, blah. Last week there were several incidents against Spanish companies but from cyber security, from the cyber security community, we protested. We went to talk with the RAE, the Spanish Language Association, in order for them to accept another definition, a person expert in handling computing systems and so on. Okay, now we're going to need your participation. I may force you to come to the first rows in order to perform a real workshop. In the 13th century, the term hack was already used. I'm going to ask you a question. If you had six hours to cut a tree, what would you do? So if you had to chop a thick uh, tree, what would you do? You wouldn't start. You would prepare your tools first. So as Abraham Lincoln said, you would spend hours preparing your tools and then you would start the work. Where does the term hack come from? From the MIT. Who knows MIT? Who like who likes Marvel? Iron Man, Starks, he studied in Massachusetts Institute of Technology based in Boston. In the 60s, it had a club of train uh, of uh, train replicas and they had this laboratory. So they invented this term for people who had innovative solutions in order to solve problems with uh, train replicas. And this was extended to the uh, world of technology, networks, and so on. Just for you to know as a reference. OK, there are other hackers. We're going to play a short video. We don't want you to get bored in order to open your mind regarding the real meaning of hackers. The video doesn't have any sound. Let me play it. Let's change it. Okay. So that you can see all the hackers who you may not have expected to see in this workshop. So this is the idea of hackers. It's somebody who looks for alternatives to get what they want with using their best skills. There are more interesting examples. This is quite interesting. 
as for the interaction they have with human beings. He is he he checks if the hammock is secure and he's holding to the bar because safety first there are some others who despite their side managed to do whatever they want to do some intrusions okay just a sec the issue of intrusion with locks and protection is quite interesting. And there are some hackers who work in teams, which is another interesting feature, this teamwork, to use different members' skills to achieve a goal. I think the idea is clear. Cuenta Mónica esta parte y voy aquí yo. Son retos y, y desafíos, ¿no? De, de los hackers. Let's talk about challenges that hackers need to face. ¿Qué vas a pagar? Para, para. Hacemos, hacemos esto. Vale, un segundito. Hacemos es que esto. andamos duplicando la salida de los dos equipos. We're duplicating the outlet of both equipments. Typically, when you n are facing a challenge, usually you look for the solution in a different way. You need to extend your analysis ability, which is what any hacker is going to do. Now, the side, th the lateral thinking or the thinking outside the box concept is quite fashionable. I'm facing a problem, but I don't. I need to think of it from another point of view, taking into account data and information. For example, one of the typical challenges, and we encourage you uh, to to do it, especially if. Uh, there are families watching us try to pass through all of these cube points with four or less lines. Yeah, let's say four lines without uh, in one movement. So the idea is to make uh, straight lines, four straight lines. Okay, so let's try. I'm gonna start here and do four. Okay, no, the middle one was not completed. Si alguien tiene la solución, que, que levante la mano. If somebody has the solution, uh, please raise your hand and tell me. ¿Cómo va? ¿Alguien la tiene? How is it going? Does somebody have figured it out? ¿Qué tal si damos una pista? A ver, no, nosotros seguimos esperando porque yo con este tipo de retos, sobre todo si tienes esa mentalidad hacker, eh, no sé, pues te puede venir alguien que te plantea el reto, ¿no? O los niños que son más impacientes. Children are more impatient. And I usually tend to say, no, do not tell me the, the solution because I want to solve it. Has somebody figured it out? I think somebody has. No, intenta, intenta decírmelo. No, no, tell me what to do. Where shall I start from? From the corner, left corner to the right corner, then you go, uh, do you go to the left? Yet yeah, that way in a diagonal, and then you go down. Exactly, that's it. With any combination from where I think outside the box, I can go through all the points. Because nobody told you you could get out of the box. Typically, people just see a cube. 
they that's why it's it's difficult to solve it because that depends on the approach that you're using because your head is fixed with an idea that's the first element lateral thinking you need to uh, avoid boundaries you need to prevent yourself from uh, putting some limits okay let's do it with only three straight lines okay you got it no, pero que no ser sin levantar el... without uh, in just one movement okay without uh, lifting your pen out of the paper okay that's the that's the fun part moviéndolo a qué te refieres what do you mean by moving it? Let's imagine this is a paper. And no matter what the, how the paper is, you cannot lift your pen. If somebody finds the solution, please raise your hand. La desvelamos, sabéis que me cuesta mucho desvelar. Do you want us to say the solution? If you want, maybe we maybe you can keep on thinking about it and while we're on the workshop you can comment on that. Okay? I don't like to share the solution as fast because I, I want some one of you to get it. Hacemos este pequeño cambio. Saltamos ahí, perfecto. Y volvemos para acá. Vale. vale. Eh, bueno, normalmente este, esta parte de la presentación... Usually this part of the presentation we do it in a different way because usually we have more audience, more people so usually we unblock someone's phone due to the distribution of the room it has been complicated but i would like to tell me if you recognize this text the station nostradamus after being destroyed three months ago why please can you tell me why do you know why do you, do i know that you have it Soy capaz de, de saber esto, ¿no? O sea, te, tendría que haber utilizado. If I know this, maybe I used telepathy, and then it stopped sending life signals. ¿Cómo lo sabía? How could I know it? En cuenta que los hackers no Hackers do not take into account that um, hackers are not always wearing a hoodie, they are not always men. Do you know how I knew that information? Well, do you have cameras? You saw me typing it? No, no cameras. Is it because I have Bluetooth activated? No, it's easier than that. I was behind you and behind you. I also show a joker, a comment saying, why is laughing? What do I want to get with here? You're, you had a pattern since I had the information that I needed. I left before knowing your pattern, but usually I would have noticed your pattern because visually it is quite easy to read a pattern and you were were not even aware that I was behind you. On many occasions we are not aware of people around us and no one of the people that I had in front of you, in front of me, uh, didn't even realize that I was there. I didn't wait to see your pattern because we were running out of time. But with numeric passwords and pattern passwords are very easy to 
uh, identify. He had a very tiny uh, not note block where I could read the small characters because I, I can read very well. I have a good uh, sight and I could wait for you to have left the room. Our device has our digital life, everything. Everything that you can imagine of is in our devices. And we want to highlight the importance of this, especially for those who are seeing us through streaming. The screen access is one of the main weaknesses of your device. So before entering your PIN code or any confidential information, you need to be sure that no one is around you, that no one can use that information against you, especially with your access method. At this point, people do not even have a security option in mobile devices which is a problem that comes from the manufacturer, especially Android. When you install the operating system and you do the initial settings, it lets you activate several options that can jeopardize your security. Well, we have here a map of, of the devices. Well, anyway, I would invite you to the blog uh, your mobile phone and let's see if you're observing something weird. Well, here we have an Android 10, Android iOS. Well, also I want to mention that one of the things that Android, okay, let, let me see, I, I do not find the pointer. Okay, here it is. So one of the things that the Android blocking screen shows is the type of blocking system that you have. If you have here the locker, you, it means that the, your device is locked. So if I'm a hacker or um, a criminal, in this case, if I'm a criminal now that wants to steal a mobile phone, I'm going to see around what I ha to see what I have around and look for security measures. Are you using the smart lock uh, unlocking system in Android? Do you know what smart lock is? Does anyone not know what is it? What it is? Well, I'm going to explain it quite briefly. A smart lock is uh, an automatic unlocking system, and under some circumstances, the device remains unlocked. For example, when there is a Bluetooth device nearby. So if you're in your car and you have coupled your phone with a Bluetooth device, the phone is going to remain unlocked. Or for example, next to a smartwatch, also it allows you to unblock, uh, it also allows you to unblock your device when you are closer to your house because it is considered to be a safe place. We never recommend that type of unlocking systems, especially in your office or any other public area. So the Android locking system, when it is locked with smart lock, changes that symbol and shows a locker surrounded by an unlocking uh, symbol. So as you can see here in this numeric keyboard, key, when you when I'm clicking the password, what's happening? What's going on here when I'm typing the password? I mean, would you know what's the password of that device? Why? Because you are seeing that. But in order for this to be more user friendly, it allows you to see it visually. I mean, now the, the, um, the number that Raul is pressing has a circle around, and this is going to allow people around, around you to get to know that uh, password. And same things happen with the pattern. The numbers are going to light up. So it doesn't. You don't need to have a very uh, good sight in order to be able to see that. It's very easy to visualize.
No, este Entonces, no. Que en, en función de la versión de... Yo creo que aquí, ¿no? De la versión de Android... No, tienes que meterte en el propio pin. ¿Vale? Sí, sí, sí. No. Está, vale. ¿Vale? Vale. Entonces, en el pin... Perdón, a ver... Vale, esto, ir buscando en función de la versión de Android. So, depending on your Android version, uh, the, the characteristics are different. I mean, the menu is different depending on the version. But uh, you, you are going to find an option that says, do you want to see the characters that you are typing, that you are introducing? You can enable or uh, disable that option. For example, in iOS, this is the left screen here. If I go to touch ID password, how many digit, digits has my password in iOS? Four, right? This is obvious because I just have four dots. That's the idea. You can change that. You can change the passcode. You need to introduce the previous password and you can use a pin of six figures, which would be safer than uh, four. But you can go to this blue option in order to choose alternative options, such as alphanumeric passwords, four digits, um, four digits passwords, or some things like that. This is not offered in Android, but it is offered in uh, iOS. So when the device is locked, I'm going to lock it again. So why, is, why can't I lock the phone right now? I mean, you can see that I'm trying to lock it and I want to unlock it and it is unlocked directly. There are two timers you have to um, take into account the inactivity uh, time of the device and when this is going to be applied. For example, here it says required access code in 15 minutes. I'm going to show this in a different way. I'm going to change language to Spanish because you probably have your phones in Spanish. So here you ha we had an option that said access code and it says uh, which, with, what, with which frequency should I, should I require that password. So when I lock the device, uh, sorry, uh, and, but the, it seems that we are having a problem with the language chain, change. Well, Android is changing menus continuously, and depending on the version of your device, this is going to be different. So here we had this, uh, this information in adjustments. Now it is in privacy. Here you have a an option which is showing passwords and it says showing characters briefly when writing them. This option is activated by default in the operating system. So once we have configured the version, we have to make sure that this option is disabled. So when you are... You're going to see the difference now. So that's the difference. So here, besides showing that circle, I even can I can even see the figure itself, which is even less safe, less secure. So we have to make sure that this option is disabled because the characters remain on the screen enough time to to see them and to write them down. Same things with the pattern. I can see the pattern and it's very easy afterwards to remember it. 
Well, I'm going to show you iOS right now. So here I have my device blocked. How many digits uh, is the code for digits? Normally, an attacker shouldn't be able to know the length of my password. So it's very important to set things up correctly and not to ha maybe we can put an alphanumeric um, password or a, a password that does not specify um, defines the number of uh, of characters that we are going to introduce so well now i've of, of, i've changed the password with a pattern. Okay, sorry, but I, I don't think we are sharing the screen, but well, what, what happens with that option when we are having a pattern is that when I... Okay, sorry, but... So we would see the pattern, the line of the pattern on the screen. So that, that's one of the options that you have to disable when you are setting up the device. So you've probably seen this in other environments. The accessing codes are used in many different environments, such as uh, uh, ATMs that say that you have to cover the screen with your uh, when the keyboard with your hand when you are right in introducing it. Also, uh, there are some uh, codes that are not recommended. Or, for example, how many of you could tell me what's the code of that? door, which is uh, locked by that uh, panel. What is it, the code, the password? Well, probably three, four, five, six, we're not sure. It may be six, five, three, four, or something like that. But uh, the options are more limited. This is the idea that we want to convey to you with this presentation. Also, sometimes you are publishing uh, personal information in your social media that may be related to your codes, and some people could try to correlate that information. So, and we started with this question, do you think that um, anyone could um, unlock your device? And it is very important to raise awareness between children and between teenagers, because it is we need to know how to use this type of devices. We don't need to use a code in these devices that may be known by other people. For example, how many of you have used as a code the birth date of a family member or a special date, I don't know, the day that you got a dog, information that may be on social media. I mean, you're not going to say my code is the day I got a dog, but maybe you can say I got a dog today. Many of us uh, may have done that. We used to link our codes to something that we can remember easily. Not long ago, well, we are, are writing security guidelines and we would recommend using passwords or alphanumeric codes that were uh, complicated against biometrics, but what we've seen is that taking into account all the configuration um, and setups of uh, devices, visual um, passwords are more dangerous. So what we are recommending right now is to establish a password which is very solid, which is robust and, and is not shared to any other service but that you don't have to introduce many times during the day. Because once you introduce it, maybe a pot potential attacker can see uh, some of the figures, some of the characters. Some other day, he may see some of the rest of the characters. So same thing that you do not leave the lights on when you're not at home. 
try to uh, not uh, avoid locking and unlocking your device continuously. Uh, also try to use a solid password. And also in other situations such as this password, such as this workshop, you can use biometrics. We didn't recommend um, biometrics before because there are many uh, methods that have violated these biometrics and these biometric parameters. Uh, we wanted this to make a workshop which is interactive. So I want to ask you, do you want to know how someone can try to break uh, break into uh, face ID or this type of uh, biometric methods. Okay, I will show you a couple of videos that explains how these methods have been avoided. And it is not that uh, high tech method. Uh, for, let's start with Touch ID, the fingerprint reading system of iOS, and then we will move to Face ID the latest uh, version, the latest option. If we are talking about movies, about films, how can I get access to a mobile device of a user? How can I get your fingerprint, for example, in order to access your mobile phone? With uh, tape? Well, what happens in movies, for example, in James Bond movies, someone invites the bad guy to a whiskey and when you are grabbing the glass, the glass already has a fingerprint. Where is your fingerprint? In the very same device because you are touching it all the time. So well, this attack was done by a group which was associated to CCC, Chaos Computer Club, a very well-known uh, German uh, uh, hackers group. So how long do you think did it take them to break into the touch, the touch ID of iPhone, of the first iPhone 5, I think, 5S? Since the phone was launched a week, you're saying, same day, they had to buy it, okay? We need to take that into account, they didn't have it before. But 24 hours, the 19th of September was launched and the 20th of September they published that video, the video that I'm going to show you. Let's take a look at what they are doing. So they have the phone. In the screen, you have the fingerprint. You use a normal HP scanner that many of us may have. And I'm going to scan the screen of the, of the mobile phone in order to get the fingerprint. Another recommendation is that we have to wash our hands frequently in order not to leave many fingerprints in our screen. I don't know if you can watch it properly, but they are going to zoom it. They are grabbing a fingerprint from the screen. They get that part of the, of the image. They invert colors in order for the fingerprint to, fingerprint to be more visible. And now they are going to uh, rotate it 180 degrees so that I can use it against the device. They've also inverted colors and again, 180 degrees rotation. And they are printing this in a paper. And okay, this is the part which may seem more sophisticated. It's true that these people work a lot on biometrics, but and, and may, this may be more difficult. They use UV lights against PCV, and this is going to give some uh, uh, some thickness to the uh, fingerprint. And with that, well, they are going to leave uh, that PCV, that material, to impregnate it, 
to impregnate the fingerprint. They do a solution with acid. And well, in the end, we are creating a mold with that, with that fingerprint. They add uh, graph, graphite in order to harden that mold, and they start creating the replicas, the duplicates of the fingerprint of the victim. And they just do this with glue, white glue that's used to stick furniture. Do not think about any other advanced material. Just with white glue, you put it in the mold, done with PCB and graph graphite, and once the glue is hard, uh, you just take it from the mold and this already gives you a duplicate of the fingerprint of the user and now you're going to see that it works perfectly. This is the victim who's registering, registering for the first time uh, his fingerprint in, in the iPhone. You have to put it several times in order for all your uh, fingerprint is registered and then we are going to see how the other user can um, pretend to be the user with that duplicate of the fingerprint. First time it's not working, but second time it worked. So, okay, the user blocks the iPhone and this user with the new uh, fingerprint uses it and manages to unlock the um, the phone and now he has taken off the fingerprint, the copy of the fingerprint in order to show that this was real and that he couldn't access with his normal fingerprint. Now we are going to show you Face ID quite briefly. Face ID in this case um, is a Vietnamese company that that's working on biometrics and they are the ones that have managed to um, to to break this face ID. So what Apple said when implementing face ID is that they have now a very advanced frontal camera in an iPhone that can detect 30,000 points of your face uh, through uh, infrared arrays. And uh, well, you may think that with 30,000 points, the mask that could uh, fake your face should be very realistic. But what you are going to see in this attack is that that's not like that. This is just a minute, this video. The mask that ha that this company created just, need, just needs in order to uh, fake your representation eyes, nose, and mouth. So 30,000 points end up being limited to these three features. So they are uh, putting the mask in front of the device, and the mask just is just representing some of the features of a face. And this is quite interesting. I think that at the end of the video, you can see the mask. So basi basically, it's just nice nose, eyes, and mouth. And how can you get that features from a person? Well, I'm sure that you've heard in the news that there are more and more public cameras that are recording us with facial recognition, etc. With high quality pictures, it is very easy to do this. 3D representation of a face. Before moving to the next issue, uh, you, we have all let uh, someone use our device. Uh, and for example, parents let um, their children use their mobile phones for them to watch videos, to entertain themselves or an elderly, an old people maybe comes to you and says, can you let me uh, make a phone with your device? I ran out of battery. Do you know how can you let someone use your mobile phone uh, and, and prevent that person to do something weird or, or not do anything that uh, you don't want him or her to do? It is like a kiosk mode. It is called kiosk mode. 
So your device can act as like in a kiosk mode. If I want my children to use YouTube, that person will only be uh, able to use YouTube. If that person wants to make a call, that person will only be able to make a call. Well, Android have, has included this many versions ago. I think it was in version number five or, but, or version number six at least. And iOS, iOS has included this in the version number 13. The functionality in Android is called fixing screen. Do you know that functionality? So in adjustments, you move to the security area. OK, security, fixing screen. As you can see here, the switch is on. And of course, I have uh, once I stop using that mode, he's going to ask me for my access code. For example, if I have Chrome open and I want someone to use just the navigator, I have to click on the starting button. I have to roll up the starting button button, and here in the upper part of the menu. If I click here, okay, if I keep pressed here, I can see a menu that says fixing a screen. So if I click on fixing the screen, I'm going to see here a menu that says the screen is going to be visible until you stop fixing it. So if I try to do something else with the device going back, clicking on the start button, I will have to press the initial button. I mean, I cannot leave that application. In order to leave that application, I have to click here. La idea es, tampoco... Sí, sí, no, que quiero que lo vean, quiero que lo vean. Con la frase de inicio, ahí. ahí. Ok, now, when I pressed here, I have to introduce again the password in order to unlock the device. iOS number 13 has included this in a kind of weird way because it is part of a of an accessibility function and uh, well it is called guided access here so guided access is the one that um, that um, allows you to control the devices or the, the applications of the device that uh, can be used by someone else so if we open here the navigator and we click here three times if we Sorry. Okay, I didn't activate it. This. Okay. So here, I can, we can set a different code, or we can uh, set a touch ID. I mean, it, if you can't, you shouldn't use the same password. But here, if I click three, if I press three times the initial button, my screen is fixed and I cannot do anything else. I'm going to stay here in this Safari application. And then you click, you press three times again, and I'm going to be requested the code that I've introduced, and now I can use my device. And there is also a restriction function. I don't know if you've heard of it. This option is also very interesting because it allows you to block the type of um, adjustments available to set up the device. And I don't know why Apple ha is not talking too much about this uh, feature. It's included in the time in use apl application, using time application that lets you know how much time you are spending 
on, in front of the screen, how much time you're using on social media. They included this especially for parental control. So if your child has a device, you can say, OK, you cannot be using social media more than one hour. And within this functionality, they included that uh, restriction section. So if we activate that switch, we can configure the things that you want um, to have active in the menu of adjustments. If I don't want to permit code changes, I'm not going to be able to have that option with the adjustment section. Uh, we recommend not to allow this type of changes because this is like a double um, authentication uh, process. If I need, will need to put a second code in, code in order to change my account uh, number or my account username. So that's the idea. There are many options. Sorry, one to show this very quickly. So if I access my menu here, so if I try to access my settings menu, this doesn't appear anymore because I've disabled the option of changing the code through the settings. So if someone steals my device and has my access code, I'm sure that he, this person is going to be able to change the fingerprint or things like that because it's not going to be available in the settings menu. And I would think that this is very interesting, but Apple has not is not spreading that option uh, a lot. So for families that are watching the presentation via streaming, we would recommend parents to set this up. Uh, well, in general, this is a recommendation that um, we are, uh, think is very useful because if you give your device to a child, this per the, the child is not going to be able to change your username, your codes, or things like that. And something else I wanted to mention, well, we didn't want to focus just on the locking screen, but it's very important for you to control that your notifications are not active in the locking screen, not just because of privacy issues. Uh, it's very common to see people having notifications activated in the, in the screen, and it is very easy for anyone to see the messages that you are receiving. So besides privacy, um, there are many other things that are important. We managed to unlock a device that was protected with an MDM, uh, a management uh, company management system, which was very interesting. And we got to unlock it because they had these uh, notifications active, enabled in the locked uh, screen. And also you could see the Wi-Fi networks that were open without unlocking the screen. So with that information, and you, we could connect to a, different, to a network, to our own Wi-Fi network with a locked device, and we could start launching attacks. So even though the device was locked from the point of view of internal settings, just by letting this active content open in the locked screen uh, was uh, enough to uh, to let us uh, attack that de that device. Well, this is also this is also quite frequent when the, someone wants to pay uh, something, and you can uh, see the code that that person is introducing. But well, what we wanted you to explain to you is the uh, logics of behind a hacker. They are going to observe and they are going to act with the information that they may obtain. And hackers and are investigating on new technologies all the time. They don't even sleep. They don't have time to sleep. And how can you protect uh, against this type of attack, the, the fact of somebody watching you? 
there is a traditional option which works very well besides trying to cover in the uh, screen is doing that just introducing your code with your head and your hands inside a jumper like this one no, pasamos. Vale. Bueno, era un poco también. So, what, what do you think is safer? A pin, a pattern, or a password? Pin is just four digits. Uh, well, if it's six, it's one million. An alphanumeric pattern with capital letters and, and numbers, etc. In place, 281 billion options, and regarding patterns, there are different combinations too. So, a pattern with six points, six dots, is stronger than a four digit uh, password. So, 10,000 versus 26,000. We would be comparing these technologies. So, and that's it. And regarding passwords, well, we've said enough. What do you think about this? Well, do you want to find out other methods through which we can obtain a password? Are you interested about passwords and codes, or should we change topics? I think this is something that we are all using you know, on a daily basis and may be interesting. So okay, you have to try to find out how this was obtained. We will give you later the reference of these videos. How was the code of this victim obtained? I'm going to show you. So this is the attacker that's going to try to obtain the code of a victim. Uh, well, we don't, we cannot listen to what he's saying, but he's saying, okay, I'm going to go inside the store, I'm going to buy a product, and there may be another user which is going to be my victim, and that will be paying with a credit card, and I'm going to try to obtain the, the PIN code. So this is the victim, the girl that's paying, that's paying with the credit card, and take a look because he's going to launch the attack. Try to see how he obtained the PIN. Now he already has the PIN code of the victim. What did he do? Okay, let's stop here. So he's recording with, with his camera, but the victim is not already there. It's, she's not there anymore. I mean, she was not recording when the victim uh, was clicking, was um, introducing the PIN code. No, no, NFC, en principio, normalmente... Of course, this payment, what would happen with technology if I could read the text uh, from the previous user? No, of course not. Any other ideas? Heat. He has a phone with a camera that is recording the pin pad. It is a thermal camera that I can adapt to the iPhone. I think it's $200 or something like that. It is a thermal camera, so it detects temperatures. You know, if somebody has been sitting on the couch, obviously, temperature is going to dissipate through time. So if the person stands, the temperature is there, but 15 minutes later, it is completely dis dissipated. And that happens on several surfaces, depending on the material. So what happens on a pin pad, especially those in plastic? The thermal camera detects it. So, what is the order of the keys? The last one is the one, is the five, is key number five. You have an advantage over the buttons on the door, right? Because you see the thermal, the temperature of the last digit entered. So depending on the service, a metal keyboard dissipates faster the heat. How can you protect yourself 
from this technique. A ver, podrías llevar guantes. En verano. Okay, you could wear gloves, but if what if it's summer? I mean, you need gloves that do not convey heat. That's good. You're already thinking as a hacker. How can I prevent the key from getting my heat? Because I'm not going to wear any gloves in summer. Exactly. I could push it with a, a pen okay yes because they do not convey heat maybe they kill you but that's an option I wait longer for the heat to dissipate but I could do the opposite I could generate more heat to generate noise. So when I'm going to pay with my card, I touch all the keys. I press only four, but I touch the other keys in order to generate noise. Yeah, sometimes people looked at him with weird faces, but he hasn't been stolen. But that's the idea to uh, thinking out of the box. We want you to leave this room with a different mindset. Probably some of these you had never thought of the things we have mentioned here because you didn't think out of the box regarding some objects. What else could I do with this? So the mindset of a hacker is, I know this device is for this, so if I get to know the device, I will know better than anyone um, how to use it. Maybe we can send uh, homework or maybe we can do a small exercise here. What do you think? It is going to be complicated because you are sitting very far away from each other. Okay, so your device is locked, you have an access code. What can a third party do if they have physical access to your device, even if it's for just a few seconds? So it is your turn. If you came with people you know, because I wouldn't lend my mobile phone to anyone here, but please lend your phone to the person next to me, next to you. You can rotate the phone if you are three people. So look at this, the lock screen of the user that can be interesting for an attacker. And if you came on your own, you can do a self-criticism. Camera. This is quite interesting. And this pisses me off. We have been working with iOS and iOS, and Apple and Google didn't delete this function. We are on 2020. Please, is it that difficult to go to settings and have an option so that I can decide if I can use the camera without the block code? What could we do with the camera? You need to start thinking. This idea is used by audit professionals in order to show companies the risk they have according to some vulnerabilities. So you need to think in a malicious way. Is it not to do it illegal, something illegal because we are doing it with the permission of the company, but it is to show the vulnerability. So what could we do with that camera? Can I access the existing pictures? Actually, you can't. Tell me, tell me on what it depends. Okay, let me, let me 
Let, correct me if I'm wrong. What happens today is that if you, if I access your device, I cannot access your previous pictures. However, if I start taking pictures, I can see them, but only those that I took at that moment. It is true that with so many versions of Android and iOS, you can expect anything. So, okay, you cannot access what already exists, but then I can do something, right? I can scan a code, a QR code, because cameras connect directly to a malicious Wi-Fi network, for example. They could uh, scan QR codes with embedded links that lead you to malicious links. Something easier, even if it's not QR codes. That would depend. If I take a picture, do I have any function which enables me to send it through WhatsApp, Telegram, SMS, any messaging service, Dropbox, cloud services? Usually the sharing option can be you need the access code before uh, completing that action. But yes, the option of sharing is available at that point. Something hackers do not like if you're doing things with a certain style. At the camera level, I mean. Denial of services. What could we do? Claro, ¿cómo? Un video, pongo un video a grabar. Of course, a video. I can record up to the memory is completely full, and then we'll see what happens. But let's think. I know that an executive manager of a company is going to have a phone call at 12 p.m., and I managed to have his phone his phone uh, his memory phone full then maybe the phone will reset and restart and then he won't get that call what happens if I take a picture of an employer I take a picture of confidential information and then I say to my executive managers, ooh, I think this person took a picture in his device. Then they carry out a forensic analysis and they find this confidential information pictures, right? Those are light threads which are not. What else have you noticed in your locked screen? All functionalities, I guess. You're talking about an Android, I guess. Yeah, by default, iOS and Android have a control center activated on the lock screen. Android's name is Fast Settings Menu. So from this lock screen, anyone that has access to this, just swiping down, you can have access to activate Wi-Fi, data, Bluetooth, plane mode, flight mode, so what are the risks of that? Have you ever uh, lost the mobile phone and you had to use the remote localization services? What would happen if they could deactivate that localization option? You couldn't find it, so you have to personalize, you have to customize. You have to customize your your phone, your settings, in order not to be able to activate those options. Take into account that your mobile device is more important than any other thing because everything is inside. You need to be sure you are protected. In iOS, the same happens. 
pues defecto, igualmente todas las opciones. By default, you have all the options. In iOS 13, if you press for a long time, you can handle AirDrop, Bluetooth, and so on. So do you know how to set it up in order to avoid this? Have you ever played with that? Okay, tell us. Typically, in Android, you had to activate development options and it was more complicated, but in the last versions, it is as easy as press this and that's all. This edition button. But as Monica says, I can remove some icons. As we were saying before, I think it was Android 7 and 8 when we started to customize this. I think the option was available, but you had to avail to enable the uh, other options which were not available for the normal user. And the same happens with iOS. You saw that I enabled it. Toad's ID code, you entered the code and it was protected. Okay, you go down and then what do we recommend to disable this control center and the notification center so that any no sensitive information can be on the screen? There is also another option from the uh, control center, which let's look for it. Enables you to customize buttons. The problem is that some of them cannot be withdrawn even if you want to, because they are there by default. So we recommend to unblock, to remove the control center, especially for those who have biometrics. When there was no biometrics, the way of not entering a super secure password and wasting time, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to act in a very fast way. But biometrics uh, is there to make things faster. Una, vamos, os vamos a hacer una pregunta al respecto. Bueno, vamos a irnos saltando por un poco tiempo ¿no? y cosas que, que os queríamos contar. Vamos a ir avanzando en algunas cosas. Esto es todo lo que hemos visto. Ok, let's keep on advancing that. We saw something such as camera, the control center, the disabling biometrics. So now as an exercise, as homework, protect yourselves. You need to devote some time in the settings menu in order to make your access more secure. There are other vulnerabilities. We don't want to uh, keep on going on this direction. Now at the end, we will give you some links. Do you know what this is? Cableada, muy bien, en Estocolmo, efectivamente. ¿Vale? Y, y así es como cablearon las líneas de las casas. Yes, that's what they did in Estocolm from a tower which was covering the sky due to the thousands of cables. This is we cannot imagine that with wireless technologies. Can you see if you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth activated? If usually it is easy, right? You go to settings and then there is a communication or network option and you can access that. If you want, we can start with Bluetooth and then we move on to Wi-Fi. You have, how is it? Can you see other devices? Tell us what you see. ¿Vais ajustes? ¿Teníais Bluetooth habilitado? Algunos sí, otros no. Hoy en día, además, con la idea de relojes inteligentes y este tipo de cosas. Do you have it activated? It is more enabled. 
If you go to settings, what happened? Javi has an MI5, and there is another one on, on the room, so I can see your devices. ¿Quién es Javi? Who is Javi? With an USB device from Linux, look at this device, it's this red device, USB stick, that costs around 30 euros with external antennas. And it, in this case, it's red, but if it were black, you wouldn't have even noticed it. So you can scan Bluetooth when devices are available, are visible. This is quite curious because today only by accessing the Bluetooth button it starts to be visible in order to discover other devices but for other devices to discover your device. We do not have much activity, much Bluetooth activity, only two devices. What about Wi-Fi? Do you have Wi-Fi activated? My question is, why is Wi-Fi activated in your daily lives? Okay, maybe now you're using a Wi-Fi network, but what happens when you leave the room? Do you always remember to switch it off when leaving the room, leaving the house, leaving the office. Of course not, it is quite difficult to always remember that. So while, while we were giving this speech, so we saw Lau, which we guess it, uh, there are people from the university, or maybe Castillo 5G rings a bell for someone, or Yolanda's iPhone, or has been here. Yolanda accessed, accessed sometimes, and it is quite active. Yolanda's phone is quite active. Movistar A7518, because maybe it's somebody's home network. Valecord, Spencat, as possible Wi-Fi networks. Before, there were some interesting ones. I'm going to show you. Oh my web, oh my web, oh my web, oh my web external, web azul, it is better not to find some networks. What happens with all of this? Basically, your devices, Valecorp, maybe it is a corporate network from a company. Basically, what they did was to take a Wi-Fi interface with an antenna and an adapter. We connected it, and we were scanning the traffic of your devices, which are willing to connect to familiar networks. This is the P VPN, VPL, the list of favorite networks, which registers all the networks to which your device has been connected. And that has many implications because an attacker that wants to see where you are, and I am addressing again those families with children, they can know where that person is because if they uh, are connected to a Wi-Fi network from a school, they know where they are and they can know if you have been in a place where you shouldn't have been. All that information is being re revealed by your device when you are not, when you have Wi-Fi activated. How, how can you prevent this apart from deactivating 
the deactivating the Wi-Fi, deleting the network, right? So let's imagine. Here we had Cybercam 2019. When tomorrow is over, I can delete it. And you should delete it. The office network, I don't want to delete it all the time, right? Because I'm going there every day. So as Monica was saying, I remember a case where we did a te an intrusion testing. We localized an executive manager in Holland. It was due to an audit, due to a unique network name, which was localized in a specific point of the earth. Marimi was here with her iPhone, which was quite active in Bex also so never set Wi-Fi as hidden networks because com because your Wi-Fi needs to look for them and reveal information. The level of security of a hidden Wi-Fi is very, very low, so it's not worth it. And try to remember to delete all of them, all of them to which you do not have to connect anymore. The risk is when an attacker creates a Wi-Fi network in order to emulate your familiar network. What happens if now I take the index networks and I open an access point and name it MBEX. Then you will want to connect and you will be attacked, even if the network has a password, in order to get the password. If the network is open, the device has connected and shares the same network with the attacker. And when that happens, there is a man in the middle attack. You are in the middle and you can handle the traffic between both devices. Since we are running out of time and we have already seen the most important points, let's talk about another thing. We expected to have younger people who are not familiar with older devices, but you need to be familiar with what your device has. Can you remember all those gadgets that we used to have? like VHS, uh, voice recorders, the most traditional GPS, uh, compasses, radios, clocks, everything inside your smartphone. I do not understand if it is so useful to have a smart a container vale con lo cual la gente la compra y, y se utiliza I don't know if it's that useful, but people, when doing the groceries, use their smartphone in order to know if they have enough eggs. And what is this? This is a raspberry. I am sure you have one of them at home. But be careful, because NASA was attacked by because they had a lost raspberry pea. They it, they it wasn't in their stock and they stole their credentials. In June 2019, it was published that somebody accessed the uh, laboratory of NASA. But the attack happened from April 2018. So that person was there for over a year and extracted confidential documents of missions to Mars, and they even accessed the deep space network. So with very high, high confidential information about black holes. So an institution such as NASA, 
got attacked. There was a uh, person named Jonathan James who hacked NASA and the Pentagon and ended up in prison. And there is a popular cyber scammer in Spain who has been a uh, priority one for police for years and now he has already been arrested. Do not end up in prison. You can play with it. You can vulnerate it, but without uh, crossing any illegal lines. You need to do it with your own technology and with the permission. And if there are children doing, the only difference between a normal digital criminal and a normal digit a normal criminal is that probably the criminal the digital criminal will be able to obtain a job after prison that's the only difference both are criminals so we should get to know technology from the beginning we cannot do the ostrich approach of avoiding technology we need to get to know it but we need to protect also against it we need to consume it with responsibility. Maybe there will be some campaigns telling you protect your devices. There are some uh, cases that isolate your device from GPS, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5G, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and there are also USB condoms to isolate data connection and only give you electricity. That's important when using any plug to charge your battery, but you do not know if behind the wall there is a computer getting your data. And in, uh, in, in Asia, for example, children come already with a Wi-Fi network. You don't need to use the tin foil. The idea is to learn from technology and as references, this is a gift for you, this is a link so that in which you will find more references or music. I am sure you all have WhatsApp, so you have guidelines in order to protect WhatsApp. How can I verify that a contact is who they say they are and so on. And that's all. Thank you very much for having come here. And I hope this workshop has been useful for you. Do you have any question? Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other any questions, thoughts, comments? Ah, <laughs> okay, yeah, the the exercise. Did someone solve it? Estamos muy bien, muy bien. Se pueden hacer tres rayas muy finitas y alargadas para que you can do three very thin straight lines that crosses all the points. Would it be easier to uh, solve it? Exactamente. Esa es la la idea que quería. Exactly. That's the what we wanted. To, what happens if I use a very thick pen and with only one line I can do it? Yeah, that's good. Keep on keep on thinking out of the box. Keep on getting to know technology. And if you are interested, we are collaborating with the Hackathon collaboration. So we encourage you to see their projects because it is very interesting. Tomorrow they are going to have their presentations on this auditorium from 12 to 3 p.m. So if you are here, we encourage you to come here and get to know people with more experience and willingness to contribute to the society. Any other question? It was good for you to remember. Perfect, then. Thank you very much. Goodbye.